Father, tonight as we stand in your presence, we are standing on holy ground. And tonight we believe as we surrender our total self to you, mind, spirit, and body. Dear Holy Spirit, minister to us tonight through the Word of God. May the Word of God encourage us tonight. May the Word of God give us directions tonight as we look to you and commit the remaining time to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, how many of you have ever got lost while driving? Anybody? I think many of you. I have got lost before. But that was before. But nowadays, if you are one who uses handphone, you chances are you for you to get lost is very slim because why you use what you use waste how many of you uses waste or know about waste can i see your hand real high up see there are many of you all right many of you are they call it wazers that's what they call it wazers and I, one day, I think it was about two months ago, I was driving with my wife and I said, you know, one day when my turn to share, I will say something about waste. And I began to use it to relate to my own experience as to how, how waste would guide me, same time, how God would guide me. Now, a lot of you use waste but you may not know much about ways, right? You just use it. So I Google just for your information very quickly. Who developed ways? Do you know? Ways was developed in Israel in 2006. It was called Free Map Israel then. And in 2008, it was renamed as Ways. Now, what is waste in case some of you don't know what waste is waste is a gps based geographical navigation application program for smart smartphones all right like this and it displays screens which provides turn by turn information and user submitted travel times route details and that's what it does Waze is slightly different from traditional GPS, navigational software. Why? Because it is community-driven. It is community-driven. Like other GPS software, people who use it will contribute information for all the other drivers. In fact, they say, anyway, all this information I Google, all right? In 2013, that was in 2013, there were nearly 50 million Waze users. And by now, I think it would have gone much, much further up. In fact, if I were to on my phone now, just to let you know, if I click on Waze, it says, good afternoon to me. And it tells me, it tells me something, how many users are right now. But it's not coming out. It should be. Anyway, if it does, I'll tell you, all right? Oh, here it is. It tells me right now there are 30,155 wazers around me. And there are 504 reports that has been logged in. In other words, those people who are using ways, they are actually giving information to these ways. And if I want to go somewhere, I know how to get there by looking at it. So having said that, along the line for tonight, just a couple of minutes, I will share with you, as I share the points, I would also put it parallel with how ways would be used as far as I can see it. So from that point, this is how this message was developed. So tonight, where I want to bring you to is from the scripture 
found in Psalms 32, verse 8. And if we can have it on the screen, I use three different versions. The NIV says this, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. The KGB, which is a little bit older English, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way thou should go, shall go, and I will guide thee with mine eyes. A more modern one, the Living Bible, I will instruct you, says the Lord, and guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch your progress. Tonight, these words are so assuring and comforting for us to know that if you need directions in life, God is there to guide you. God is there to direct you. And the subject of guidance is one that touches every one of us. It, is, it would be true to say that there is no subject about which you and I would like to know more than receiving guidance. Every hour, every week, every day, every month, every year, all through our life, we need guidance. We constantly come to crossroads and need to know which way to turn. Can we be guided and be sure of making right decisions? And these scripture verses that I've just read assures us and tells us that God is ready and willing to guide you and me. Everyone needs someone to help them navigate through life or the issues of life, isn't it? Sometimes we get good advice. And sometimes we don't. And you know what? The best guide, the best person to guide us is God. So in the next couple of minutes, just three questions that we want to think about is, why do we need God to guide us? Why do we need God to guide us? Second, what will following God do for me? And thirdly, how can I know that God is a trustworthy guide? First thing, how, why, why do I need God to guide me? How, how, you know, how can I know God is trustworthy? And thirdly, what will following God do for me? In very simple way, in the next couple of minutes, we will touch on these three questions. And you know what? We will then conclude with communion tonight. Communion will be served and it will be a wonderful time as we come towards the end of the service to take communion. Why do I need God to guide me? It's just like I would ask the question, why do I need ways to guide me? In the earlier days, when I first started to use ways, I didn't like it at all because I get so confused by its instructions. Turn left, turn right, 200 meters. And I wasn't able to gauge what 200 meters is. Or what was I able to tell? Turn right and keep right is two different things. And that time, it was so confusing. And then, I stopped for a while. But after a while, I said, I need to learn how to use it. And I, as I began to use it more, I found out that it is so useful. It is so useful because why? It is able to get me to go where I want to go. Waze is able to tell me what's ahead of me, even though I don't see it. I don't know what the traffic is like. That's why I need ways to help me. I don't know the location, and that's why I need ways. In fact, right now, every morning from my house to CCC, I know how to get to CCC, but I still switch on ways to guide me so that even the regular route that I would take, in case there's an accident there, ways would know how to redirect me. 
In fact, just recently last week, I visited a couple and I don't know where they live. They live in somewhere in Setia Alam, which is a total new place to me near Klang. And you know what she did? She just gave me her location on Waze. And all I did is just click and I found my way there with no problem at all. No more giving landmarks, no more telling you how and how to get there. All you do, click on Waze and you will get there. So why do I need God to guide me? Two points. First, we need God to guide us because life is a journey. Life is a journey. From the time we are born to the time where we will get to heaven, it's a long journey. The journey will lead us to many byways and highways, which requires us to choose the proper path to follow. With God to assist us, we will always choose the right path. This is found in Matthew chapter 7, 13 and 14. Jesus said, Even through the narrow gate, enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow, the road that leads to life. Only a few find it. Jesus tells us about two ways that we can go. One way will lead to destruction. And sadly, many people are walking that way. But you and I must abstain from the pressure of following the crowd to go that way. Another way, Jesus said, will lead to life. And like what the scripture says, it is even more sad or sadder to find that very few are using that way. Because why? They find that the, that way to life is not all that inviting or exciting. So first point, why do we need God? Because life is a journey and we need God to help us. Secondly, we need God to help us to avoid issues as we travel to this life. Every day, every day, we face issues in life. We need God's guidance, direction, and wisdom to overcome issues in our life. It could be a relational issue. It could be a financial issue. It could be a health issue. Or it could be a business issue or employment issue. We see here a very good example is Job. In Job 1.1, it says, In the land of Uz, there lived a man whose name was Job. This man was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. Now, you and I know that Job was such a man, a great servant of God. He was spiritually matured. He chose to follow after God. He respected God and he avoided evil. Therefore, God was pleased with him. And you and I know that Job, what kind of situation he was in. He was a very wealthy man. And at this time, he had 7,000 sheep, 5,000 camels, five or 3,000 camels, 500 oxen, and 500 donkeys. He had seven sons and three daughters. At that point of time, when you have that amount of livestock, you are considered a very, very wealthy man. And if you have read the book of Job, you know what happened. What happened? God allowed Satan to put his hand to tempt him. And even whatever happened, Job lost all this. And you know that Job never denied God, even though what Satan did to him. This led God to challenge Satan and say, who said he could break Job's faith? Satan said he could. So God allowed it. But at the end of the day, we knew that Satan was unable or he failed to break Job. And at the end of the day, God was with Job. God guided Job. And we knew at the end of the day, 
he got back his children, and yet seven sons, three daughters, and the amount of stock increased from what he had double before. So here we see someone that has great issues in his life, but yet he remained faithful to God. Psalms 1.1 says, The person who does not follow the lead of other men is a happy man or a blessed man. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers. David wrote this in Psalms 31 verse 3. He said, You are my rock and my fortress for the sake of your name. Lead me, guide me. And you and I know that how much David went through in life, the many issues that he faced, but he remained faithful. He depended on God's guidance and direction in his life. Point number two, what will following God do for me? The first one is, why do I need God to guide me? Because life is a journey. Because why? It helps us to avoid issues. Point number two, question number two. What will happen when I follow God? Or what will following God do for me? Same thing with ways. What will following ways help me or do for me? Like I said, it helps me get to my destination. In fact, not only it helps me to get to my destination, it helps me to get to my destination in the fastest time that I can and the least traffic that I can because ways will somehow know how to lead you to new routes or new roads or new areas that you have never been before. It can take you through that. That's what I like. In fact, since using Waze, I have found many new roads that I can come to CCC in case there's traffic jam. So what will following God do for you and me? Point number one, those who follow God find success in life. Those who follow God find success in life. Just like Abraham followed God, Moses followed God, Paul followed God. What did all this have in common? They let God guide them. You and I know how Abraham was called, how God called him out. You and I knew how Moses was called through the burning bush and how Paul was called and he was traveling down the road to Damascus. You and I know. But did these three of them have success in what they wanted to do for God? Yes. Abraham became the father of nations and through him, all the nations of the world will one day be blessed. Moses led the people of Israel out of Egyptian bondage. And Paul spread the gospel and he became the altar of more New Testament book than any others. So what did all this have in common? They allowed God to guide them. In fact, when I was there doing, preparing it, it came to my mind. It's the same thing. How did God place a call in my life. As I sat there last week listening to Pastor Richard and those of you who were here last week, I had a very pretty similar background like he did, like he was. He was working in a bank, chartered bank. I was working in a French bank at that time. And like he did, they started an EDP department. It's called Data Electronic Data Processing Department. And that time, 35, 36, 37 years ago, it was supposed to be the cream of the department of all the bank. They call it cream de la cream. The best would be chosen. So I also applied for that. And I got in. And worked there for two or three years. And somehow, working there in that department for two or three years, I found that somehow something is missing. 
I wasn't contented even though what I'm doing, what I'm getting. And at that time, I was already attending Calvary Church and was very involved in ministry. And because of the, somehow, something is missing and I couldn't pinpoint what it is to put it in a short, concise way, someone told me that a foreign financial institution is setting up a new office in Kuala Lumpur and he arranged for me to go for that interview. And I remembered that very afternoon as I was holding my envelope with my resume and I was walking along this dirt road, I can still visualize the exact condition. And I was walking towards out of the main, to the main road. I heard a voice really inside. It's not like a very loud, audible voice. Not like Paul with a light shining down. But I could hear a voice deep down in my spirit and ask me this question. Why don't you serve me? And I knew, and I knew it was God speaking to me to give up what I'm doing. Forget, I did go for the interview and I didn't bother about what the result was. And I knew where I would be heading. But did I respond immediately? No. I thank God for spiritual leaders. And from then on, I sought spiritual guidance, counsel. And I remember Pastor Peter, we went for lunch one day. We had chicken rice, and after the meal, I shared with him, and I remember he dropped me back into the bank at the entrance. He prayed for me, and that was pastoral counseling given to me. And the other person was Pastor Stephen. I'm not sure if you remember that. It was in the library. The library was our coffeehouse ministry in Sungai Wang, which you have heard before. If you have not, in those days, we used to have a coffeehouse ministry where we rented a shop lot in Sungai Wang Plaza. Sungai Wang Plaza, 35 years ago, was the shopping mall in Kuala Lumpur. And many people would go there. And what we did as young people, we would invite people, shoppers, to come into that shop lot. And we would talk to them, serve coffee with them. And it was behind one of the counters before the service began. We prayed and I shared with you. And Pastor Stephen prayed and gave me pastoral counseling. And after receiving those, and I prayed and I knew, and I knew that God's call was upon my life. And that's where I would say, yes, Lord, I would give up what I'm doing and I would come and serve the Lord full time. And that was 35 years ago. And till today, I can safely say, I can confidently say, those who obey God, those who walk in His way, those that follow His guidance will find success. I may not be a millionaire today, but I am very happy where I am to know I have also a wife that served the Lord and a son that served God faithfully in His ministry. And to see how God has blessed, that's what I call success in my own life. And God can do that for you too. When you follow His ways, He will bless you. What about those who oppose or those who do not follow God's guidance? Very simple. I was talking to Pastor Stephen or rather emailing and I had one example but he gave me a better example. Ananias and Sapphira. 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 <laughs> Did I say Sapphira? <laughs> yes. No, it's Ananias and Sapphira. This is a couple, you know what it is. If you don't, go back and read Acts chapter 5, all right? It tells you the whole story. But in a nutshell, basically, during that time, the apostles, the disciples would come together and they would sell their belongings. And what they sell, they would bring it in and share it among themselves to help one another. And here this couple sold their land. And what they did, they pretended what they gave was everything it is, but they held back some of it. And they say all they gave was everything that was to the sale of this property. They did not follow 
what God has placed in their heart. But you know what? If you go back and read it, it is so interesting that when Peter ad- talked to Ananias, addressed the issue, and he knew Ananias did not do exactly what he should do. You know what happened to him? He fell faint. He died. And what is even, not say better, what is even more interesting, three hours later, the wife came and Peter asked her the same question. Is this all that you sold the land for? And she said, yes. And she fell down and she died too. And this became a great kind of like the church was amazed what happened. Basically, it's trying to tell us, hey, hey, obey God. Don't disobey God. Obey what He tells you in His heart. Don't play play with God. In other words, be serious with what God tells you to do. So what will following God do for me? You will find success in life. How can I know that God is a trustworthy guy? How can I know? Just like ways. How can I trust ways? Can I trust it? Yes, I can. Because ways, the information, remember, is given or contributed by a community of users or drivers. People who drove ahead of you are the ones who fed you with the information. Sometimes, sometimes, as I drive, Waze tells me to take this road, but I would see, oh, that road is clearer. I will go that road. I know that road. I know that route. And lo and behold, I didn't follow what Waze tells me, and I used my own little knowledge to take that way. And I will find myself in a traffic jam down one kilometre away. That's what happens. And now, sometimes I still don't, lah, but most of the time. And if I don't, my wife will sit next to me and will say, See, why you don't want to follow ways? If you had, you wouldn't be stuck in this kind of jam. Which now, I try my best. Most of the time, I would follow what ways tells me. It is reliable. So point number one. How can I know that God is a trustworthy guy? It is evident God knows the right way to go. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Most of us knows it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lead not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him and He will make your path straight. We can see four steps that is outlined in this verse. It is evident that God knows the right way. Why? It says, trust. Trust God completely. Number two, trust in His guidance and not in your own understanding. Trust God at all times. Therefore, focus on Him and give Him credit for the great accomplishments in your life. And lastly, trust in its direction and you will always be where you ought to be. Trust Him. Trust Him. And point secondly, God is always prepared to guide you. How can I know that God is a trustworthy guy? God is always prepared to guide you. Jeremiah 33 3 says this, Call unto me, and I will answer you, and tell you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. Have you ever called a friend or a family member with an urgent matter and only had them to tell you they're too busy to attend to you or help you? Have you ever called needing help and got to an answering machine or a voicemail message? which I think at times we do. God is always, is always there to assist you. God is never too busy to assist or you will never receive a busy signal and get an answering machine. You will never get an answering machine from God. 
He will not say, leave a message. Tell me what's your problem. Tell me in 30 seconds. Get to the point. Be focused. And don't go around the bush. And I will come back to you as soon as I can. God will not do that to you and me. All right? And oftentimes, oftentimes, we think we have the answer. And how true we need to know that God is prepared to help you, answer you, and show you what He can do for you. So in conclusion, the promise of God's guidance. God says, I will counsel you with my loving eyes on you. Or, the other two scripture verses, what did God say? I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my eyes. I will instruct you and guide you along the best pathway for your life. And I will advise you and watch your progress. Three things about God's guidance. God is able to guide you and me. God is willing to guide you and me. And God is longing to guide you and me. If only, if only we will look to Him for His guidance. Tonight, God and through His Word will tell you what road to take, where you need to make a course adjustment, or whether the path that you are on is the right one or not. Then, you will have to let the voice of the Holy Spirit speak to your heart and mind and listen to the directions that He would lead you. Church, God wants to help you through life. God wants to help you overcome the issues in your life. And God, the perfect guide for our lives. God's ways, the title of tonight's message, God's ways, W-A-Z-E, is the Word of God, which will guide us through every obstacle and every challenge and will lead us to our final destination. Will you let God be your guide tonight? Will you call upon Him and say, Father, tonight I am in this situation. I am at this crossroads. God, I am at this point of my life. Father, I don't know what to do. I am not sure where I should go. I'm not even sure where I am is where I should be. Tonight, God, you have given us your promise. In Psalms 38, verse 2, you will guide me. You will desire the best for me. You will show me if I call upon you, if I look to you. With every head bowed, and just before we have communion, and what a wonderful time for us tonight to come before the table of communion. Let me ask you, are you needing directions in life? Somehow, there is in your heart, you know you are not where you should be. Or maybe it's in ministry. You are needing God to guide you, to make a decision, 
how and where to serve. Or maybe it's in your business. There's a good business deal, as good as it looks on the outside, but in your heart, you know something is not right. It is so tempting to let go of the contract. Let God direct you. Are you in a situation facing a problem, a challenge? Or maybe you've been falsely accused of something. And tonight you say, God, I need your guidance. I need direction. I need to make a decision. Or maybe it has to do with your family, the children, and you're needing God's direction. Tonight, where you're seated, if somehow you sense God is speaking to you and you're needing God's help, God's assistance, God's direction, God's wisdom, lift your hand up. And that where you are will be your altar tonight. Lift your hand up because God, when He sees that hand, many hands are being lifted up. God sees the situation that you are in. As you lift that hand up, believe God, believe God, believe God, trust in Him, trust in Him for His guidance, for what He's going to show you, where He's going to direct you, and what He's going to do in your life. And He's going to help you. May I invite you to stand.